So we hit the, the whole center. Who are you? Yes, uh, I'm Daniel Tordera. So I'm a senior uh, scientist at the whole center. And uh, I'm here to, to show one of our uh, new uh, development, which is a fingerprint sensor. And uh, what is special about this fingerprint sensor? We have uh, we use organic materials to print it, so you can make really a huge sensor. And this sensor can be integrated in uh, different applications. Uh, for instance, one of the applications that we're aiming is to, to integrate it inside a, a OLED, uh, together with an OLED screen inside a, inside a phone. So, as you can see, uh, the area of the fingerprint sensor is quite big. It's six times eight cent square centimeters, and it has the capability of uh, um, detecting multiple fingerprints at the same time, or even you can detect palm print, palm print, or any other different uh, features that you would like to bring. So the thing has a resolution of 500 ppi, which is the FBI standards for biometrics, and it's uh, very fast. We can integrate it anywhere we want. We can do it with uh, visible or infrared light. And uh, as I said, we can print it in large area. And we, we print it. It's what we're doing about today. Yeah, exactly. So we can make it actually like an estimate behind. We can make it flexible. We can make it a large area. We can implement it for many different applications, X-ray, biometrics, uh, healthcare applications, anything that you, you would like to. And then you have a whole bunch of other demos around here in the booth, right? Yes, yeah, so I can introduce you my colleague Pete. Hi. Hey. And uh, he can maybe explain you a little bit about uh, this uh, pressure sensor. Yeah. Okay. Hi. So what do you have here? So this is a pressure sensor. <coughs> it's a, a TPU layer with a printed pressure sensor. And if you press it, uh, you can actually see the response here. Uh, so this nice. pressure sensor can work uh, in a strong range. It's fully printed. You can upscale it. Fully flexible. Fully flexible. I have a separate sheet here. How do you print stuff like that? This is made by uh, screen printing. Uh, so you can see it's uh, really uh, flexible. It's uh, stretchable. It's now a bit tough because it's multi-layer. Uh, Pressure sensor. Yep. So in principle, so you can uh, have this on the clothes. Yep. And if you push harder on the clothes, something happens different than if you just touch a little bit. Yeah, of course. You, if you look here at the response, if I uh, so the first touch is uh, there's an air pocket, and first you make contact be between the top layer and the bottom layer, and you see a small response. And then when you increase the pressure, you get in a resistive response of the sensitive material. What if you touch between those things? Then there's nothing. Ah, so you have to touch on it yeah. on the on the rod around. It's kind of like a bunch of buttons. Yeah, but but we can make it more dense. Here's like a shoe inlay. There's uh, over 400 sensors in here. And uh, I can demonstrate we have a movie of this. So if you look at the movie, you can see someone stepping on it and you see here the response. So there it's much more dense. Nice. You have a lot more stuff in the in the yes. in there. Could you grab the bottle? Now I can take it out. Yep. I'm not an expert on the bottle, so I, okay. uh, I cannot uh, explain. Why the bottle too much. experts? Uh, not around. Not around, yeah. So this is a uh, OLED. Uh, so it's same type of uh, OLED as uh, we have here. OLED lighting. OLED lighting, yeah, on a flexible substrate. It's bendable, so. up to one centimeter radius. In research, we can go right. even to a millimeter radius. Yeah. And this uh, OLED bottle, this is um, in a European project called Tetius. It's yeah. a consortium of multiple uh, companies. What do you have here with this cup? Ah, that is. Uh, uh, for demonstrating inkjet printing. So most of the things here are made by screen printing. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, made by inkjet printing. So we have printed circuitry. And this cup uh, measures the temperature of the liquid inside. Uh, so uh, there is... Uh, now it's cold. Now it's cold, yeah. There's nothing inside, so it's cold. Uh, so uh, circuitry, LEDs. There's a battery in the back of the, of the graphics. Uh, Qi charging, nice. so wireless charging. So it's a nice uh, demo. So it's just to illustrate that inkjet printing can be uh, suitable for making multi-layer printed circuits. So if you want to build a great coffee place, you would use that. And then if it gets too low, you get to throw it out and get a new coffee. Something like that. I would but say. But hopefully uh, people don't just take it home, that cool cup. Or you buy it first. Oh, you could buy it, yeah. You buy it and get a limited refill or something. Sorry, let's go on this side over here. So, uh, if I'm looking... So, this is a... Uh, it's not too much to see. I will uh, start it up. All right. 
just need to unlock it. So this is an energy harvesting system. If I put it on the right spot, you see a small LED start to burn. So now it's via NFC, it's harvesting energy from the phone and it's storing it in the, the battery. And then later on it can uh, give the energy to uh, uh, a certain device. It's and not a display there, no? No, no, we have That's a similar with a display. Uh, we'll take this one. So this is again an OLED with NFC. Oh. And now the NFC is har harvesting energy from the phone and it's using it to uh, power the OLED. <coughs> That's really cool. So your credit card in the future is just going to light up? Perhaps. That's nice. There's so much other stuff in here. If you yeah. look at the... So in the... This one is running every 30 seconds or so. This is transparent OLED. You can integrate this in the windshield of a car, for instance. And, uh, well, you have to get the right... Uh, yeah, right it's, timing. It's in a loop. What's this plastic thing there with all the PCBs? Ah, it's uh, a multi... Ah, uh, so this multi. is this one, uh, but then there. a lot of them. There, I see the loop. So you could have this in a wheel shield. Yeah, in the, in the front windshield of the car, it's uh, semi-transparent, uh, so you so you hardly see it uh, when it's in the windshield, and you can use it for uh, uh, emergency lighting or uh, direction or something. Uh. Is this uh, molded? Yeah, so the top is uh, thermoforming. So in thermo right here, yeah, Just for the mic, yeah. Okay. Uh, the thermoforming, you see here uh, a research plate where we uh, do research on uh, how a certain ink responds to uh, uh, the stresses that you uh, create after thermoforming. Uh, and here you see an actual stack being built. Yeah. Uh, which one? Can we take it out? Yeah, yeah. sure. I could be here as well. So, is, uh, what being built? So, you have here a flat plate and there is a graphic printing that's the black there is multi-layer uh, screen printing of conductive and isolating layers component integration uh, so everything is with relative uh, cheap production methods it's made and then uh, you use it in the uh, thermoforming machine this is a, a nibbling how do you put the pcb the chipset right the, there uh, the chips are uh, placed by pick and place machine very so, accurate. Yeah, so we have uh, equipment, uh, you first you do a stencil printing of the conductive adhesive. So you have uh, all the small contact packs are really accurately uh, uh, stencil printed. And then the pick and place machine takes from a wafer stage, takes a component, uh, measures the uh, orientation, uh, looks uh, for the position and then places it in the isotropic conductive How's the adhesive. yield? 100%? Sure. <laughs> There's no issues with... Pick and placing on the no the pick and place is uh, it's uh, common technology it's uh, we can do it really reliable and well nice. the challenge is uh, the next step when you have this uh, these, this high resolution uh, the components everything and you put it in the the thermoforming machine powered by the NFC yeah no no that's not for powering that's uh, uh, something some readout or yeah. uh, uh, but then you put it in a thermoforming machine you heat it up and then you with with uh, high pressure you form it into the shape. And uh, yes. well, there's a lot of stress, there is uh, pressure on the components, uh, so, so that's where a uh, big challenge is. Nice. How uh, much of the, the whole uh, technologies get used in the, in the world? Uh, are people able to, to buy products with like, awesome displays like this? Uh, so, so this is a final product of uh, what we were talking about before. It's a final product, it's yeah. real. Yeah. So this is, a, a, this is an example of what, what could be made using this technology. It's uh, made for one of our partners uh, uh, for automotive. So this could be uh, in, in a car console. Uh, uh, and this has, uh, well, it's Is the car's right. heartbeat? Yeah. So it has here capacitive touch sliders. Uh, it's running on animation mode. I'm not going to touch it. <coughs> uh, you can change the color and you can change intensity. You can use uh, NFC <coughs> and it has a uh, transparent touch in the middle. Uh, it's like a nice colors. Yeah, it's now just running a, a, a standard demo uh, graphic. Nice. So, uh, whole center is uh, is it an old institution? Um, old center is now. It's founded in 2005. Ah, so it's very young, right? Yeah, quite young. But how much of the whole center cool tech is uh, is available? Um, since so, 2005. So, whole center is an open innovation uh, uh, institute. Uh, we uh, develop technology together with our partners and for our partners. We have companies throughout the whole value chain that are a uh, partner in Whole Center. So we have material suppliers, equipment manufacturers, end users, everything is there. 
and they have a common interest, for instance, for making uh, technology to make a uh, new car console or nice. to make a wearable health patch. Uh, so let's say I want to use the fingerprint technology. How much is it going to cost to use I it? I have no clue. <laughs> or this? No clue. <laughs> no clue. So, so How the, does it the, work? The, the, um, uh, um, they have to join? Yeah, so, so you join whole center either in a bilateral project or in an open research. If you are a joint partner, then you can uh, you 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 uh, can steer the program, so you can give input in what you want and use to the technology and use the technology. So if you pay for it uh, as a partner, you can steer the program and you become also uh, you get license of the the IP which is generated. Do you have to contribute uh, developers, yeah. engineers? Uh, no, yeah, that's a, that's an option. So in whole center, there's about uh, 280 to 300 people. We have about uh, we're very multi, uh, uh, um, from, multi from all the all over the world. Uh, there's yeah. people there about Where thirty. Are you from? I'm, I'm Dutch. Dutch. But I think we have something around thirty nationalities working in and Old it's, Center. It's in based in in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Eindhoven. And uh, besides that, we have a lot of student PhD working, but also uh, industrial residents. So people from the company come to a whole center to work together with us on the technology or on their application. Uh, so I guess it's really an uh, awesome office, right? An offi awesome it's great. I go to it's work every night. It's got lots of cool uh, things all over yeah. the uh, lab. It's very cool. We have a very nice lab. We have multiple labs. We're located on the high-tech campus in Eindhoven. It's a former Philips Research uh, Laboratories. And now it's an open campus. There's uh, about 150 people, uh, 150 companies located, varying from uh, very small to very large. And the whole center is one of them. Cool.